Sweden's Gripen fighter jet has long been marketed as a symbol of independence, an agile, affordable, European-made alternative to the US or French aircraft dominating NATO skies. But beneath that image of self-reliance lies a paradox that Saab, the jet's manufacturer, has just reaffirmed. The Gripen's heart still beats with American power. Specifically with engines built by General Electric, the F-404 in the older CD variants and the F-414 in the modern EF versions. And according to Saab's CEO, Mikael Johansson, that dependency is not going away anytime soon. This issue, once a quiet technical detail, has become politically charged. As Donald Trump begins his second presidential term and signals a return to transactional, America First policies, defense ministries across Europe are asking themselves uncomfortable questions. How independent can a country truly be if the backbone of its air defense depends on Washington's export permissions? For Ukraine, which is preparing to receive Gripen jets, this question is not academic. It's strategic and existential. Saab's answer was unambiguous. Johansson told Germany's Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung that replacing the American engines is simply not viable. It would be a massive and uneconomical project, he said. That phrase, uneconomical, captures Saab's reality. Developing or certifying a new engine would take years, cost billions, and introduce immense technical risk. For a company operating in a global market dominated by defense giants like Lockheed Martin and Dassault, it would be corporate suicide. So Saab stays with GE. Yet the decision is not just about money, it's also about geopolitics. Johansson stressed that U.S. export policy is no more restrictive than Sweden's, implying that Washington would not arbitrarily block sales. He even framed the situation as a potential win for America, saying the U.S. benefits when Gripen wins tenders against rivals like France's Rafale or the Eurofighter Typhoon. It's their second best option, he said, if they can't win themselves. It's a pragmatic argument, but one that also acknowledges an uncomfortable truth. Sweden's strategic autonomy in aviation remains constrained by U.S. interests. This interdependence is not new. The F-414 engine that powers Gripen E also propels the U.S. Navy's Super Hornets. The technology is proven, efficient, and reliable. But it is also subject to the U.S. International Traffic in Arms Regulations, ITAR. That means any export deal involving Gripen requires Washington's approval. So, if Sweden wants to sell jets to a non-aligned country, or one Washington deems politically sensitive, it must first get a green light from the Pentagon. For a neutral nation with a long tradition of independent foreign policy, that's a significant limitation. It's easy to imagine the tension this creates. On paper, Gripen is a sovereign European weapon. In reality, every jet carries an invisible line back to the United States. The same dependency extends beyond engines. Avionics, radar components, and electronic warfare systems often integrate U.S. technology. The deeper question, then, is whether a truly independent Western fighter jet can even exist in today's defense ecosystem. Every manufacturer, from Saab to Dassault to Leonardo, operates in a web of shared components, cross-licensing, and export controls that blur national lines. But let's return to Saab's position. The company is, in essence, trapped by its own success. Gripen's appeal has always been its cost efficiency. The ability to deliver fourth-plus generation performance for half the price of an F-35. That equation collapses the moment Saab attempts to de-Americanize the jet. Developing a new indigenous engine, say from Volvo Aero, would not only be expensive but also require years of testing and recertification. It would mean redesigning air intakes, fuel systems, and flight controls. The result would no longer be a Gripen as we know it, but an entirely new aircraft, one Sweden likely cannot afford to build alone. This dependency recently played out in real-world politics. Peru, which had been on the verge of signing a Gripen deal last year, suddenly changed course after a political upheaval and began leaning toward the U.S. F-16. The price tag was higher, but the political assurance, the knowledge that Washington would support and supply the aircraft, became decisive. That episode illustrated Saab's dilemma. Even when Gripen is technically and financially attractive, the perception of American control over its core systems can sway potential buyers toward fully American platforms. So why doesn't Saab push for an independent engine anyway? Because the global fighter market is unforgiving. The competition is not just about performance, it's about timing, alliances, and interoperability. Every country buying fighters today wants immediate delivery, guaranteed maintenance, and integration with Western command networks. Saab cannot afford to delay or price itself out of that race. And ironically, staying aligned with U.S. components ensures smoother NATO interoperability, which is now a selling point for countries like Finland and the Czech Republic. There's another subtle factor, politics inside Sweden itself. 
Since joining NATO, Stockholm's defense industry has become more integrated into the Western supply chain. That means the government's incentives align with maintaining, not reducing, technological compatibility with the U.S. defense base. Developing a fully Swedish engine might serve sovereignty, but it would also signal divergence from the alliance's logistical ecosystem, a costly message at a time when Sweden seeks deeper integration with NATO partners. Still, the long-term risk is obvious. If U.S. export policy shifts, for instance, if Washington under a more isolationist administration restricts deliveries to certain partners, Sweden and its customers could find themselves with grounded jets and no spare engines. The Gripen's greatest strength, its affordability and flexibility could instantly become its greatest vulnerability. And what about Ukraine? The prospect of Kyiv flying Gripen fighters powered by American engines introduces its own layer of complexity. On one hand, it strengthens interoperability with Western systems and guarantees access to proven propulsion technology. On the other, it ties Ukraine's air capabilities to U.S. Export policy at a time when Washington's political climate is anything but predictable. Saab's statement may reassure investors and existing customers, but for Ukrainian planners, it underlines a sobering reality. Strategic independence is still conditional. In a broader sense, the Gripen story mirrors that of many Western defense programs in the 21st century. National branding and marketing emphasize sovereignty, but real-world production relies on multinational supply chains, shared patents, and political alignment. Even France's vaunted Rafale uses U.S. components subject to ETAR restrictions. In that context, Saab's dependence is not exceptional. It's symptomatic of how defense industries now function, but that does not make the dilemma less profound. In a world where the line between ally and supplier is blurring, where sanctions and export controls are as decisive as missiles and radars, technological dependency becomes a geopolitical weapon. Saab's insistence on staying with American engines is rational. But it is also a reminder that in modern warfare, independence is as much about supply chains as it is about sovereignty. In the end, the Gripen remains what it has always been, a smart, capable and politically balanced fighter, but one built within limits that even Sweden cannot fully escape. The question is not whether Saab can remove its weak spot, it's whether in today's globalized defense ecosystem any country can.